Welcome to Integrative Preparedness and American Reversion. I'm Steve Smith. Uh, I was going to do a different, um, and I, I just realized I just now remember where to look on this thing, where the camera is. So I think the one I did yesterday looked like I was looking off over your shoulder. So sorry about that. I'll try to remember. I was going to do a different one today, uh, uh, more along the line on preparedness, but this has to do with preparedness. And uh, but I was I was watching a um, a video on another channel earlier on Squid Actual and, he, and it was something about um, he said be uncommon and his point was um, you know to be to be nicer really to the people uh, around you to uh, to be unlike uh, so much of what the world has become now and uh, and I couldn't agree with him more I left a comment over there on there kind of talking about um, uh, how things used to be when I was, was a kid, I, I, I said, and I think maybe I'll call this video something like better times or, or something. Uh, oh, and I should say also, usually this isn't the kind that I'd usually put on integrative preparedness. It, it's more what I'd put over on the other, uh, American reversion site that I haven't done anything with for a long time. And I apologize to those of you who, who uh, particularly liked those? I'm going to get back at that as things settle out here more. And and uh, anyway, so oh, and somebody else said that uh, he says uh, where you're sitting there looks like you're in a a, a, a New Orleans sporting house. And, and uh, for any of you who don't know what that means, this is a family friendly video, so um, I'm sure that Google can tell you. But no, this is my living room, or actually my my front room. People call it different things. Um, so anyway, so as so I commented to uh, Squid on that, and and I said, uh, you know, it's it's uh, back in the 50s and 60s when I was a kid, uh, things were a lot different, and uh, uh, you know, uh, men and and youth opened doors for women, and women said thank you, and uh, everybody said please and thank you. Um, Men were called Mr. or Sir. Women were called Ma'am or Miss or Mrs. Uh, men stood up when women entered the room. And so did uh, the younger people. When an adult entered the room, they stood up and they, they offered uh, chairs to the, to the older people. It was a time of conspicuous courtesy. And it was a good time. Um, you know, men tipped their hats or took off their hats to women. And uh, for anybody who thinks that I'm sure there are a lot of people out there kind of snickering right now, thinking that's a quaint, quaint idea. Well, it was, it was, it was nice, and there were reasons for it. Anybody who wants to know a little bit about hat etiquette, and and I I know that people don't wear hats much. Uh, well, some do. I talk about that. I think in uh, the second book, if I'm not mistaken, in the revival, I talk about uh, the etiquette of, uh, of cowboy hats. So if anybody's interested in that, uh, it's in the second book. But uh, people would, and people paid attention to the world around them and, and, and to the people around them. And when somebody needed help, you stood up and, and helped them. Um, young people and children were respectful to their elders, always all the time and all the kids and I I, I, I mean if maybe there were some in the world that weren't but they weren't in my world and uh, they were times of um, high expectations um, of uh, as I say conspicuous courtesy uh, and it wasn't that these people were weak they they weren't at all uh, it was it was a matter of showing respect it was, uh, I, I've told people, and I told my wife, and I think she has a hard time believing this. She probably either thinks that I'm making it up or uh, or uh, am not remembering things as I get older. But uh, but it's true. I, uh, I never recall ever having heard adults raise their voices to each other until I went on the police department when I was 21 years old. And... Uh, and that's the truth. Uh, adults used to act like adults, and uh, that's uh, you know it, it was a shock to me 
and whether it was that I was in a different type of place or whether I think more of it had to do with with um, the changing of the, the overall society. But, you know, if, if women had differences with each other, uh, they handled it quietly and, um, you know, with, with some reserve. And, 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 and men um, tended not to be loud. You know, if there was a difference between men, they, uh, they spoke directly and everybody understood what everything meant. Uh, you weren't dealing with clueless people back then. And, uh, and everybody knew that it could get serious real fast, and so they kept it on, a, like I say, a, a basis of conspicuous courtesy, and it was a, what I consider to be a, a better time and a better way. Well, anyway, this reminded me of something that I, that I uh, wrote about, in, and I thought it was in the second book, but as I went back through it, it's in the third book, The Renewal, and it's in the beginning of the book. And uh, it's it's <clears throat> when a person, I won't say who, because that would be kind of a spoiler um, to anybody who hasn't read the, the first and second books yet. Um, it's when this person is, is giving a talk at, uh, at the 4th of July uh, get-together at Stonemont. And so I, I want to read that. It's just uh, instead of trying to make it up again on, on my own, um, I wrote it, so they're my words, so I want to read it and, and just kind of talk about it. And it's just about a page or so, and, and I'll try to read faster than I talk. Uh, everybody says that I talk slow. I guess that's true. And, and this does apply. I, I think that it applies. The reason that I wrote this also is that it applies not just if we had to rebuild a society, but the way that we ought to try to rebuild our society now. And, and we do that. Until we can do it society-wide, we need to make sure that we're doing it on an individual basis, in, in my opinion. Okay, so here he starts talking. He says, in order to look to the future, we must first look to the past. It provides the lessons and examples we need, both good and bad, to chart the course of our choosing. When we look to the past, we see that something happened to America. Not the collapse, but something before that. America had changed. For those of us who grew up in the 50s and 60s, and certainly before then, it was not the place we remembered. It was not the place we had hoped to live in and raise our children and grandchildren in. For those of you who were born later, your freedoms and privacy were limited beyond what you may have realized, while the demands on your productivity through your income in the form of taxes and fees were enormous limiting your ability to create and hold wealth and value for yourselves and your children. Your lives were not what they could have been. We discovered that we could not trust our leaders, that many, if, if not most, in our government sought their own good instead of working for the good of the people and the country. We declared a war on poverty, only to create a permanent dependent class that resented those who, prov who provided for it and demanded more from us with each passing year. We declared a war on drugs, only to fill our prisons with nonviolent offenders, create an oppressive police presence, and actually increase our drug problem. We forgot Washington's warning against foreign entanglements and created enemies around the world. We ignored his admonition against political parties, allowing the voice of the people to be replaced by wealthy families and special interests thereby subjugating the freedoms of individuals to the political agendas of groups of the collectively demanding or offended. We ignored Eisenhower's warning against the growing military-industrial complex and had our military involved in special operations and non-military actions in more countries than most people knew existed. We allowed our constitution to be shredded, our religion to be despised, our work to be denigrated, our borders to be breached, our values to be mocked, and our unborn children to be slaughtered by the millions. With this in mind, we should not wonder that a collapse like we experienced was justified, perhaps even necessary, and maybe even to be expected. The way forward is not a continuation of the past. It must not be. While basic values and principles can be used as a foundation for what we build in the future, a model that allows for simply repeating the mistakes of the past must be avoided. 
Keeping this in our focus, I encourage each resident of our communities to pursue the way that seems best to them while observing the simple admonition to do no harm to others and following the greatest of charges to treat others as you would like to be treated. More is not necessary, less is not acceptable. Excuse me while I, I turn a page, I'm holding the camera in a hand. I haven't gotten a tripod yet like Joe told me I needed. Well, I had one and, and it broke. Uh, the independence we now celebrate, we now must celebrate, is the independence of each individual to choose the way they feel is best for them, free from the institutional tyrannies of the past. Okay. So that's that's what I wrote, and that's in that's in the third book. See if I can hold this up. See if yeah, that's that's the renewal, and uh, and I think that that applies to uh, uh, kind of what what Squid was saying, but. Uh, that applies to to really our, our our lives now you know that um, it shouldn't take uh, a an EMP to wipe out the world in order to give humanity you know or at least some of us uh, an opportunity to start over again uh, starting over again is what we do each day in our own lives every morning brings uh, you know a, a fresh opportunity to, to make that day and to make uh, to make our lives what we want it to be. And so, you know, it's, it's just my thoughts that I share today um, that, that each person, as, as we look towards building the kind of future that we want to have as it is today, you know, uh, let alone if something happens, uh, to keep our mind on those most basic of, of values and principles uh, to, to make sure that our world, at least uh, to the extent that that we can affect it. The world around us is one that's a, a, a world of value, of, of mutual respect, of mutual assistance, and, uh, and of loving our fellow man as, as we are supposed to, as we are charged to. Uh, bringing our kids up with the way they ought to be and, uh, and giving them the strength that they'll need to live in a world, whether it's the world that we live in now, um, that has plenty of challenges to try to, to stay on the, the right way or uh, in a world after a, a, some kind of collapse. So anyway, those are just my thoughts today, kind of spurred by, uh, by the other video, by Squid's video. And uh, I'll shoot the one that I meant to shoot today, probably either later tonight or, uh, or uh, tomorrow. So you all have a good day and uh, just remind you that we prepare well today in order to live well tomorrow. Thanks a lot. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.